Hello, folks. I want to welcome you to the Washington County Public Affairs Forum. I'm Eric. I'm your president. Thank you all for packing yourselves in here like sardines. So sorry that uh, we have an excess capacity crowd, but hey, most of the time we don't, which is a good reminder for you to sign up and be members if you're just a visitor. We do important work here, and I would really welcome all the members we could have on board. Uh, what I'd like to do is next announce to the candidates that if you'd like, you're welcome to come sit up here and get a front row seat. And in the following order, we're going to have these speakers. Before I announce the order, I'm going to announce, announce protocol. First and foremost, only forum members are allowed to ask questions during the forum program. So if you don't have a blue badge and if you're not a paid up member in good standing, we'll cut your mic and we'll ask you to politely uh, um, sit back down. So my members have asked me to enforce that. Also, I asked all the candidates to limit your question or limit your answers to one minute. And the most important person in the world in the world today for you is Marilyn McWilliams. Would you please wave? She's hi Marilyn. Give her a hand. Marilyn is going to cue you and let you know that candidates, you have eight minutes and that uh, then you, the opposing candidate will also have eight minutes. Then we'll take questions, and then we'll go to the next set of races where the same rules will apply. The candidate's order is going to be as follows. First up, Greg Malinowski. Second up, Bob Zaworski. Third up, well, John? Oh, my apologies. Bob's up first, then Greg. Then we move to Bob Terry, and then Elizabeth first in the second half of the program. So what I'd like to do is ask you for uh, a round of applause for Bob Zaworski. Come on up. You. you got eight minutes. Getting up here, does that count too? Thanks. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. I want to start off with saying thank you for allowing me to be here. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Bob Zorowski, and I thought I would start off by saying the two questions that are most commonly asked. Why am I running? And I'm running because I can't afford to stop growing and adding jobs in a tough economic time. We need to continue to be a leader in providing the future to helping families, young professionals, and putting food on the table. I've lived in Rock Creek for 33 years now. My passion is a concern for the continued growth and economic development and health of Washington County. I bring a full set of skills and experiences to the Board of Commissioners, and I think I can earn their respect and credibility. As a veteran, I learned perseverance in times of uncertainty, conflict resolution, and strong work ethic. It started with my dad and my parents. My dad was raised in a ranch in South Dakota, so I know what hard work was like. There was a family of 10 with the two parents, so it was a family of 12. And at first I thought they had just a small farm because they talked about uh, growing their own vegetables in the couple of acres. Well, those couple of acres were their garden. And uh, all the girls went through high school. None of the boys were allowed to go through high school because they stayed home at work. And so my dad had then from there went to the Navy, became a lum was a CB in the Navy and then a lumberjack, and then a union carpenter for the rest of his life. So our family knew what it was like to get through tough times during economic downturns. We lived that portion. Business manager, my business background, I've been a um, management trainer for Pacific Power and Light, planning for economic development for other cities and countries, as well as counties. Business owner in consulting for large and small companies as well. We own a family business, actually two of them, uh, worked in small businesses, not-for-profit organizations, and 30 years with strategic planning and process improvement. Community involvement. I have spent a lot of time in the community. Beaverton Local School Committee, elected six years, scout leader, SBA, Small Business Administration, Rotary uh, for many, many years and lots of friends in Rotary, and with the, working with the sheriff. I'm on the ESPD Advisory Council, so my background, and I'm really passionate about having a good, safe environment, place to live for our community, as well as going inside the jail. Uh, as a university professor, people say, isn't that a little nerve-wracking going in and out of jail every Monday? And I say, no, 
actually I get more respect from the inmates of the jail than I do from some of my students at the university. So, why should you vote for me? We really need to have smart, responsible, sustained growth. We need to focus on three things. And I gave a lot of thought to this when I was designing my website a long time ago. And that was even before I filed. So my website I actually put together the three major items that I think are important. Number one, vision. Number two, collaboration. And number three, results. Vision. We need to, we still need to have a shared vision for the county, which involves each and every aspect of the community, not just a small percent of the people who are the loudest. The privileged few who have their land and work and work against smart, sustainable growth by trying long-range, excuse me, by trying to tie up the long-range planning in the courts, and keeping a larger pop, keeping the larger population fenced in where there is no choice to build straight up instead of out. We need to encourage long-range planning by all developers, cities, county governments, schools, fire, other key services to work on a plan which will allow communities to continue their quality of life, which is the reason our county is desirable to people to locate here and to earn full-time family wage jobs in businesses and in the trades as well, which are equally as important. Second point, collaboration. I don't make promises that I can't keep. I will work with the other commissioners as a team. You will always hear me say we instead of I. I want to give and earn mutual respect with the other commissioners. This is how I believe you want me to represent you, the people of District 2, as well as all of Washington County. Courts are the means of a last resort not the first cho choice when you don't get your way. Our future lies in working together as one community. And that is my vision. Third point, results. My third and final point, we want to follow a collaborative approach where there's no limit on what we can accomplish together. We need to seek out our similarities and not our differences. When we see each other's reasons, we can work for solutions. Let me close with a story you might know. When I was, might not know, when I was on the local school committee uh, six, quite a few years ago, they were building Rock Creek uh, th th with uh, 185th. They were widening the road. And during that time, the Rock Creek community wanted to put in a stoplight. The stoplight was across from Rock Creek Elementary. We, was designed, we were hoping to get it put in at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. We ran into oh, drink of water. Thank you. All right. We uh, helped put it that uh, stoplight in, and we ran into a little hitch. It was a, we can't get there from here. A very difficult issue, and that was there was too much of a hump in the road, and so they were going to widen the road, and we found out that later afterwards that. The widening of the road on the other side was already owned by Beaverton School District, opposite where Westview is now. So we were able to make a common sense proposal, which got adopted, which was to be able to put in and grate down the road as part of the MSTP2 project and allowed a traffic light to go in. If not, four years later, Westview, Westview was built. We would have spent millions of dollars tearing up that road again that we just had built and widened sidewalks and everything else to take this hump out of the road. So what we need to do is have leadership which will listen to the communities and ac accurately represent the constituencies to the rest of the board in a responsible, factual manner. One of the things that sidelined there, I do, I teach ethics. And one of the things that I tell my students is, my job is not to teach you what is right and wrong. My job is to confuse you at a higher level. And so with, the, with that particular thought, what we want to do is look to how we would measure our ethics. If you can live with the decision of your decisions posted on the front page of the Oregonian, 
for all your family and friends to read. Then you will know you've made the right choice. And that's what I want to do. I'm asking for your support and vote. I do believe I'm the best qualified, and I will work with the other commissioners to continue to provide services to our residents in an effective, efficient manner. Please stop and see my wife, Debbie, and we'll have information for you. Thank you for your support. Well, my name is Greg Melanowski. You've probably heard that name before here. Uh, been around for a little while. Um, I'm your current voice in the second district of Washington County. Second district is the uh, area is roughly bounded by Cornelius Pass, uh, Baseline, Jenkins, Center Street, up to the Multnomah County line, and then kind of it wraps around Beaverton and down into Raleigh Hills. I grew up on the Washington County, Multnomah County line. My dad had a business there that he started putting work into in 1941. My brothers and I have continued that operation. We, uh, and we haven't killed each other, which is a sign of a certain amount of business acumen, I believe. Uh, currently doing farming there. Um, one of the basic raw materials, the basic raw materials of farming are, you know, sun, soil, and sweat. And, um, sorry about lunchtime, I know. <laughs> and so by the time I was in high school, I had already started working on land use because that was the thing that we felt was most limiting to our business. Um, we, the sun comes out when it does, not much we can do, and then there's always time for hard work. But the key thing is to protect your soil background. So I've been involved in land use and that kind of thing for quite a while now. Uh, my wife here, um, the, the situation was that when we went on one of our first dates, I said, well, on the way to where we're going, I, can we stop for a moment? I, I need to run a little errand over here. And, uh, I kind of set the tone because we stopped at the planning department and I dropped off some testimony and it was, you know, it had to be done. But uh, anyway, 35 years later and I've, always stopping for some little thing on the way somewhere, huh? So uh, we need, as this county, to, as we go forward, we are very friendly to big businesses. If you're bringing a $200 million building and you're going to import a 1,000 workers, we're your guys. But if you're a small business, not so much. I didn't realize how that situation was until I asked for a community development director because I was running into small business people who needed a hand starting a business in the area. And was told, you know, the county doesn't provide a lot of services. If people want to start a small business, Greg, don't you think they should start it in a city where those services are? Okay. My district's got, um, it's got Raleigh Hills, it's got Cedar Hills, it's got Cedar Mill, it's got a little piece of this area, it's got Bethany, and it's got Rock Creek. And that is way too big of an area with too much commercial space to tell businesses they need to take their business somewhere else to start it. And so that's one of the huge points of this county. 80% of the folks around here work in a small business. We're eating today in a small business. We need to do what we can to help these businesses. Uh, one of the horror stories, I guess I'd call it that, um, that I've got to tell is uh, when I was first running three years ago, I had a lady who was just fit to be tied, and I, I talked with her. She had gone down to the county to uh, try and open a business. She wanted to open up a sandwich shop, something that would work for her family. She had two girls who were growing up. She wanted to leave something for them, and she thought that would be the way to go, and it's a wonderful idea. So she went down, and she got a permit for... Um, about, uh, I think it was $100,000 worth of work she needed to do to bring that place up. And so she went and got her financing. She did the 100000 She met all the criteria. When she had it all checked off, she went back to the counter at the county. And they slid a, another sheet of paper in front of her and said, well, here's 60000 more you need to do. Now, if you've all been involved in a business startup before, um, there was no excuse for that. And the person at the counter in the first place 
should have told her she needed one hundred sixty thousand dollars worth of work not one hundred now and sixty thousand later now she managed to get that done we managed to get her open the business not survive but that's the last thing a small business needs a surprise like that and when a big business comes staff gets assigned to make sure that everything they need is all presented to them and it's about time this county cared enough about small business to go ahead and work on that portion of it as well um, we need to have a better plan than you know, really ought to take your business somewhere else if you're going to make a go of it here uh, we need more than the bare minimum in that area in transportation we need our bikeways that connect to commercial and industrial areas not just the house next door and the same is true for sidewalks sidewalks to the house next door that's swell and we are very good at doing that but we need to go ahead and get those sidewalks to schools parks and libraries because that's where the demand in and this is about livability successful neighborhoods are about livability you want people on the easiest term to drive through your neighborhood and go gee I wish I lived there and if we did live there it, and so as long as people are driving through your neighborhood and they want to buy a house there your neighborhood's probably appreciating if they're driving through your neighborhood and going man I hope I don't have to live here then that's a problem and the county needs to be aware of that and working on that as well uh, we've done quite a bit of work on sidewalks we had a, a memorial sidewalk issue over on 119th and Cornell we've got that sidewalk in because some kid got hurt you can't mix people in a hurry on the way to work and children on the same piece of pavement or people trying to come home after a long day and children on the pavement uh, we got that sidewalk in I worked hard to make sure it was on both sides of Cornell I worked with Ruth deal on getting sidewalks to Tualatin view and the planners all said well no one's going to use that sidewalk somebody got killed we'll put it in and guess what that sidewalk's full of kids and it's full of people walking on it for exercise there's a church at the bottom of the hill and you can now take a sidewalk all the way to the commercial center at Cedar Mill and people do especially kids so we're having buses the school district hires buses to haul kids a thousand feet between their homes and the school because the county doesn't make sure that there's a sidewalk between that subdivision and the school it doesn't make sure there's a safe crossing and frankly our schools need all the help they can get they could stand to use another teacher and what they don't need is buses hauling kids who are already within sight of the school but just can't get there sidewalks to schools are not de desirable they're necessary they're critical we have to work together to do that and we may have to make a little noise to do it so I see we've got uh, three big items here transportation how much do we need who pays for it and when our TDD project is going to provide 28 percent of the needed infrastructure from new development to our county however the other 72 percent is it's not extremely clear where that's going to come from and we need to be you know big adults about it and figure out when the timing is on that citizens do have a right to say how things are done in Washington County you don't need five great white fathers sitting there telling you what's the good for you and so we need to make sure you've got people who are looking out for you and asking you what you think and livability you deserve to be in there goes my timer livability uh, now if I could only make it quit um, so livability is huge you want your neighborhood to be improving and get to be a better place I'm Greg Melanowski I'm asking for your vote in May thank you folks we're gonna take about 10 minutes of questions for Bob and Greg when you're at the microphone for four members only please tell us who you're asking the question of is it both or is it one particular candidate and I ask if you're in line please ask your questions in 30 seconds or less and candidates please give your response in one minute or less Jim take it away um, there are concerns about your vote for Allen for council Allen was one of the lead attorneys during the Nike case, which wasted tax dollars, scared away jobs, and reduced local government credibility. Allen never apologized. Now, I know that you're new, but why wasn't there greater due diligence in Allen's closed job interview process? Was there really only one candidate? Thank you. 
No, we, uh, we, have, we ask people to be on advisory committees, and I feel that one of the reasons that we do that is so that we get some advice, good advice, different advice than what we already have. I think it's wrong to put someone on an advisory committee if you already know what they're going to do. In Alan's case, he was an applicant for the position. He had good connections in the neighborhood. He was used to the roads, and so he came to the top. Now, I've heard several times the county commissioners, some of the ones that I, I, take to, I have to work a little harder with, uh, several of them have said, you know, anybody who sues this county, we should ban them from being on advisory committees. And I thought, well, that's interesting because there goes your voice of dissent. And maybe we ought to know what they think. And then I found out that developers who sue the county regularly on advisory committees, and I was told, well, you know, Greg, that's different. That's not about philosophy. That's about making money. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. We're not the smartest people in the world. We need to put advisory people on committees that, in fact, see if I can make it stop now. Uh, I'm going to have to get rid of this thing here with a rock. In any case, uh, we need to have advisory committees that have dissension. And we need to be able to hear that and think about it. It's not just a yes man's club. So. Question. My name is David O'Gwen, and my question is for both candidates. And the question focuses on independent leadership qualities. Our experience is that many times the county planning staff makes recommendations based on precedent that fails to follow the community development code, the comprehensive plan, and state laws. If you are elected or re-elected to the county commission, will you make motions and stand behind them to reject the county staff recommendations that fail to uphold the requirements of the CDC, the comprehensive plan, and state laws? And, not, and, and even if other members of the commission do not follow your lead. Great question. My, my background in leadership, I failed to mention I also teach business law, so I have a firm understanding with that. I also work with the Washington County Sheriff. And let me tell you what, if we don't follow the laws, we're going to be in trouble. So I, I will take a hard stand no matter what it is with anybody about following the laws and following the regulations. One of the things that I want to just talk about real quickly, though, is uh, some of my leadership philosophy, and that is you're going to hear me talk about the positive things that are happening in Washington County because that's the way we get collaboration working together. Driving a stake in ground and saying, take this side, take that side, doesn't benefit anybody. So I really want to work together to where people understand where individuals are coming from and they can actually, by that, collaborate and start to understand and have mutual respect. So thank you for your question. You're going to have tight areas like this. You're going to have to get skinnier candidates. It's all I can say. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yes, I mean, the code is what we live and die with. And we have to constantly be ma maintaining that, co that code. But you know what? We also are responsible. We're also responsible for seeing that code is right. And part of that is having to sue the county. I have a confession. I was with a group 25 years ago that sued the county. A uh, gentleman had bought some forest land in a forest area, and he cut all the trees down. And so he came into the county and said, this is farmland. There's no trees left. And it was steep, but we said, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We'll make it farmland. And then after it was farmland, he went down to the county and said, this land's covered with stumps. I can't farm it. I need you to convert it to rural residential because it's not good for anything else. I was part of the group that helped take that to court and we sued, and the county has a little better code now because of that. So, you know, we need to have an honest code. We need to have an honest code in our system, and sometimes people have to sue to get that. Virginia Bruce, forum member. Uh, this question is for Mr. Zorowski. I was the recipient of a telephone poll a couple of weeks ago, and I understand it was paid for by the Realtors Group. 
And my understanding is that the poll was conducted for your campaign, Bob Terry's campaign, and Chairman Dyke's campaign. I wonder if you'd care to co uh, comment on how your campaigns are coordinating, and will that mean that if you're elected, we'll have more of the same? I sure would, because uh, that is brand new news to me. I had no idea. I guess anybody who is interested can conduct a poll. Um, that's really all I know about it. Um, you know, if there was a poll conducted and they were supporting us, it must be because they're supporting growth. That's all I can figure out, is they, they're supporting the economic development of growth. And realtors, as well as unions, have a real stake in this. They want to have that income and that growth and the economic viability of the county. So if they did it, I guess they did it. But uh, I certainly, I, I don't even know if I've been endorsed. Uh, both of us have been out and uh, made the presentation. I haven't heard one word there yet. So thank you. John, you have the last question for this round. And for you in line, you're welcome to hang out and ask your questions afterwards. John, take it away. Thank you. Mr. Zorowski and Commissioner Malinowski, uh, in light of the county's experience with the reserves process, also the experience of Metro, would you want to change the statewide land use laws and would you want to uh, in any way restrict the uh, jurisdiction of the Oregon Court of Appeals? And I please be specific. Thanks. Um, I don't think we need to restrict the Court of Appeals. That's how we make sure that our rules are followed. We go up through the court system. What I think we want to avoid is having the legislature do the zoning in your neighborhood and draw urban growth boundaries for you. Uh, primarily, the reason we ended up in court is we didn't follow the rules. We had a process where developers and uh, planning directors for cities got together and worked out what they'd like to see and where they'd like to see it. And... Uh, then we asked the public what they thought, and they told us, and then we kind of ignored that and just went on our merry way. And so uh, if there's a train wreck here, I'm afraid that we may have had something to do with it. It's not the appeals court's fault that we violated the rules. And uh, so what we need to do is, though I would be on vigilance, you do not want, you absolutely do not want the state legislature doing the zoning in your neighborhood. And you don't want them planning for growth because they're not going to pay the bills to put it in. So, my thought. From that background, all I have is history. Uh, I was not part of the decision, nor uh, it probably will be done, and we'll have to live with what, it, what was being done. I know there is upset people on both sides. Whenever you go to, and you do a last minute, uh, a last minute uh, deal at the last minute to uphold the court's decision, so yes, I uphold the court's decision, and I commend the commissioners for doing that. Am I missing a question? How would you change the jurisdiction for statewide land uh, I don't think I would change it as of right now. I would, I would hope that the groups could get together and continue to do long-range planning between the Washington County, the sheriffs, the schools, and everything else, so we can actually build a better infrastructure. And so I would want to move ahead with what we have. In the future, I think, now that's the answer, in the future, I believe that we need to do a better job of educating the public for specific time frames. And that is, what is the time that you're looking at taking the information in, and then what is the deadline to cut that off? And then, so be it, follow through. We can't study everything forever either. Thank you. Folks, let's give our candidates a hand. I'd like to invite Elizabeth first up first, and then Bob Terry second. And as our candidates are positioning, I'd like to remind you. I don't have the card with me, so it's Bob Terry first. Well, Bob, you want to come on up? Okay. Um, I want to remind you that we have uh, three hardworking servers in the room. We've got Chris, Shalina, and Paco. And as you close out your tab, please remember them with a tip. And. Uh, I got a tip for you. Listen to this great speaker. His name's Bob. Take it away. Thank you. It's great that Bob's get to go first, right? 
the way it should be because we are first. You know, four years ago when I ran for Washington County for this position as commissioner, I, I made some promises to you and I've kept every one of those promises to my knowledge. I don't know if any of them that we haven't, we're not either working on or we haven't completed. But I heard some things today that frankly kind of baffles me a little bit. I must not be in the same county as Commissioner Malinowski because the things I heard from him today, I've never heard from him before. I've never heard of such a thing. We live in a great county. I'm not here to cut down our county or how things are being done. I will tell you, four years ago, I went in with a commitment to make things run and work better for our customers, that's you, in Washington County. And I'll tell you, we successfully have done that. Land use and transportation, we did a complete, a complete paper flow of how all the paperwork and land use and transportation flows and works. The redundancies we found, we eliminated. We, we stopped sending people upstairs, downstairs for the most part. You still have to do some of that because the health department's on the, first, on the first floor, or second floor rather. But we are continuing to work on that. We send people to customer sensitivity training to help better serve you. Today, when you walk in land use and transportation, land use and transportation is set up with a welcome, well, is a welcome room with a sitting area, and you're greeted at the counter with a smile. You didn't see that four years ago. In addition to that, we're continuing to work on every department in the county to respond and react the same way. So that's my county. Now, in addition to that, cities have their own charter for all your land use and transportation issues, for all your building issues. They're not done by the county. Now, some of your smaller cities contract with the county for them to do it for them. In those cases, they do have to come to the county. These are important rules because what you heard here today is not what, what you heard. So if you live in some of these other cities who are developing their own land and developing their own cities, you must go to the city for a permit. It's not a county issue. It's not a county job. And that's the way this system is set up. I don't see any reason to change that system. As a county, we should not be running the cities. They should be running their own business and they take care of themselves. Secondly, any land that is to be that is to be annexed or any land that is to, to be developed on must first be annexed into a city. So if you're developing land into the urban growth boundary, that city, before that can be approved, must agree to annex that property into the city before it can be moved. Secondly, I don't know of any, any farmer or anybody anywhere in this county who has been forced to sell their property to a developer. Now we hear, you know, TDT stands for Transportation Development Tax. That is not a developer's tax. That is a building tax that was voted on and approved by the people. That was not a commissioner tax. It was a people tax. That tax is a de detriment to the development of the county and to the cities. We need to better manage that tax and come up with other ways for those people to pay for the huge amount of money that that tax is, is creating. That could be a, a stopper to whole slow things down. That's the reason why the county commission, all five of us, I might say, voted to defer that. To defer 20% of that until next year when we have a chance to redo the ordinance and make it more palatable for you, the citizens. Yes, that's the way it is and that's the way it works. As far as, as, far as your county goes, you, you live in one of the safest counties in the, st in the country, not just the state, but in the country. Your, your, your uh, criminal charges in this county are, are, are smaller than anywhere in the, in the state, certainly the smallest in this region, and it is continuing to go down. Why is that? Because your county commissioners support your sheriff's office and safety, and that's the reason why it continues to go down. And that isn't going to change. You know? we, we have plans in the future as to how we better can support the, the sheriff and all of our safety, including TV, TV FNR and our fire departments. It is dry in here and hot under these lights. Those were some of the com commitments I made four years ago. In addition to that, 25% of your transportation budget today is spent on cycle tracks, ped paths, which are sidewalks. 25% of your trans transportation tax today. So we are improving those cycle tracks. In addition to that, I was the county commissioner to step forward and said, we need to separate bikes from cars and transportation. We need to separate cars from bikes. It's a simple fact. 
we are going to have more more bicycles and cycle tracks in this county and in the, in this state than anywhere else. They're coming more, and there's more and more of them, and that, that doesn't bother me at all. It's just that we need to we need to support them. We need to protect them and protect ourselves because if we don't, then we all pay for it. So what we're what so the policy we now have as a county when we rebuild a road or put in a new road, cycle tracks are separated from by from for the roadways. That's really a smart thing to do. If, if you don't have the right of way, then we are coming up with better ways to separate the cycle tracks from the automobiles. That's the way this county is. You know, the Tribune recently did a, a, a poll, a very large poll, in fact, as to the livability and the happiness of this county. That poll was then extended beyond this county. And you know what? This is a happy county. By 70% of the people who took the poll, they were happy with how this county was run and operated. And you know what? I agree with them. Think about this. We have zero debt in our, in our general obligation bonds. We have zero debt. We're, can, there's another, you know, anybody know another county that can say that? That also has kept your taxes down. I've been on your county budget committee for 14 years. In those 14 years, we have not raised your county taxes. You have seen taxes go up in the 14 years, but they're not your county taxes. The tax increases you see are the taxes you voted on. This is your school bond measures, your, your, le your road levies, things that you voted on yourself, parks, pools. Those are the things you vote on and, and increase your own, own taxes with. State mandates have had some tax increases, but your general fund tax for your county has not increased in 14 years. Why is that? Because we manage our budget. We don't have debt, and I want to keep it that way. We want to improve, we want to improve the, the, uh, the county fairgrounds. It's been suggested that we have we float a bond. That is debt, folks. That will raise your taxes, and you will pay more. We can do it with the funds that we have and that we that we generate ourselves through either through our normal taxes or through the gain share that will pay for that. We're not going to start buildings until we have the money to pay for those buildings. So there'll be nothing to have a, have debt for. Why would anybody want debt? That is amazing to me. With that, I want to tell you, I want your support, and I want your vote. And I want to see our continue to run and run happy and be that happy community that it is today. I encourage you, don't listen to the doom and gloom because it isn't here. It's made up. Thank you. Next, we'd like to welcome Congresswoman Elizabeth First. Come on up. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here. And uh, it's an honor in two ways, to be here running for an office in this county and also realizing that I may very well have represented you in the United States Congress, and that was a great honor. I'm running for Washington County Commissioner for three reasons. One, I think we should preserve what we value, and I'll go into each of these. I think we should invest wisely in the future. And then something that got me out of my retirement chair was I think we need a more open government. What started me off was this knowledge that the commission was going to vote on urban and rural reserves. And I watched the process. I watched the process as a testifier, I'm particularly concerned about Oregon's land use bill because I think it is an economic driver. Oregon is so lucky to have this law, and I'll tell you why. But I didn't like the process. I didn't think we were listened to. I didn't think that the commission took into effect some very expert testimony, including the Oregon Department of Agriculture. And uh, so they were sued. Well, if people object to suit, I will tell you, I've lived in other countries, it's the greatest protection we have. To go to our courts, to have our courts decide who are above any kind of pressure. Yes, I think the situation in, uh, at the state was difficult, but I think the state tried very hard to fix a problem they had started. It was a state law that created the urban and rural reserve prospect. Now, the second reason I'm running is that I began to look more closely 
at the government that had been governing me. I must admit, I had my mind somewhere else. Washington, D.C., back boy, back boy. Anyway, um, what I wondered was, why is there so, so little openness, so little transparency? And I believe there is very little transparency. Now, I'm sure members of the commission would not agree with me. But I have watched that uh, whole commission work. And I'm concerned that we need people there who understand that our citizens have most of the answers. Elected officials do not come equipped with all the answers. They need to listen, and they need to listen clearly to what citizens are saying. Oh, it may take hours. Oh, dear, you know, I have to listen to people talk. Well, too bad. That's a democracy. That's what we need. We have to have this glorious democracy. So what did I mean when I said uh, preserve what we, uh, what we treasure? Well, first of all, we treasure, and Oregonians and Washington County residents treasure, open spaces, clean air, <coughs> clean water. They are thrilled that we have farmers close by. The whole issue nowadays is having farm and, and, and town close together. We must value our families. Our families are not getting the strongest support. I think other issues are being, other interests are being listened to rather than the public interest. Okay, and so what, what's the next thing that I would do? Well, I would invest wisely. I look at the county charter, and really the kind of county charter speaks of services. The county provides services, yet in our general budget, we do not have an opportunity for social services as a safety net. 274 people in each month apply for rent assistance. That's bad for the county. That's bad for a community, that families are being forced onto the streets. We need a general safety, safety net. That's what people expect of us. And then the other thing I would invest wisely in is I would invest in how do you create jobs. Government cannot create jobs. They're very bad at creating jobs. They're too slow, they're not creative enough, but what government can do and must do is it must provide an atmosphere and a community that encourages development. What does that mean? Streets. It means availability of affordable housing. What a great jobs program, affordable housing. You can't ship those jobs to China. You can make them right here in Washington County. We need to encourage small business, not because big business is a problem. It's not. Big business, wonderful. We, we're, we're thrilled to have it. But small business creates 67% of all jobs in this country. It's not big business that creates all those jobs. They need places where their workers can work, where their workers can live, and most people want to live close to where they work. I want to touch briefly on gain share. I think there's a great deal of misinformation about gain share. Gain share is to fill the hole the tax abatement made. It's not a, it's not a slush fund. If you have lost money because you have had tax abatement for a big company, and everybody does that, it's a, it, I have no objection to it, but if you've lost money, that's where gain share money should go. It should replace the taxes, and that means the services that were lost. So I'm very interested in serving in this government. I was honored to serve in the United States Congress but I have always believed that if you've seen something go wrong in your community, you better step in and do something about it. I saw this in South Africa with apartheid, and I was part of that. I saw it in Washington State when they were taking tribal fishers off the rivers, and I started an organization uh, to protect tribal fishers. And I believe that we all have a duty 
to run for government. I think that's a great duty. It's public service, first and foremost. And I'd be honored to represent you in this county. I ask for your vote. And I ask for you to come to me and tell me what needs doing, what needs fixing. I'll listen. Thank you. Elizabeth, if you'd uh, remain up here, we'd love to uh, have you answer some questions. So folks, please keep your question under 30 seconds. Candidates, please keep your response under one minute. Harry Bodine, Harry take it away. Before, remember, I wish that I'd been able to ask this question for all the candidates. The county provides about 60% of the operating funds for library service in this county. The, of that amount, two thirds is from the general fund, initially always approved by the voters. The last third from special levies, one of which will expire here in a couple of years. I want to uh, thank the two commissioners present, Bob and, and Greg, for making sure that we all this money wound up being spent for libraries, unlike some others around here where they it's a bait and switch. You vote for the levy, we'll take it out of the general fund, spend it somewhere else. So will you will you continue the, the incumbents to support this policy, where? library funds go to libraries, including the general fund, or would you take this money and spend it somewhere else, or allow it to go somewhere else? Will you continue the present policy, or will we start playing games with library funds, general fund? You already asked me this before. Sure, I'll be happy to take that and go first. You know, to my knowledge, a couple things have happened. First of all, there are no plans to divert library funds anyplace else. They are still in the budget. This bu upcoming budget, to my knowledge, are still in there as they were in the past. If there are needs for library, then the people will decide that with a bond measure if there's additional needs that are not in the general fund, and, and I would not object to that by any means. But I think it's important you all do know, part of this gain share money we've been hearing about, a good chunk of that went to the Aloha Library. In fact, over $100,000 went to the Aloha Library to build the Aloha Library. So that's some of where the place where that gain share money went. And it's important, and that was for, for a library uh, beyond a, a county library. So I, I would intend to, to do that. We're also working on how we can handle the Cornelius Library and the Public Services Building in, in the City of Forest Grove at the same time. So thank you very much. Well, as not, I'm not an incumbent, of course. I can say, well, yes, of course I support libraries, but it's true, I love our libraries. I look at our libraries and I see the most incredible diversity. People are able to come, they're able to learn, and I would support that absolutely. And thank you for the question. Libraries are vital to our communities. Thank you. David O'Gwen again. Um, I'm a member, and this is for both of the candidates. In residential areas in Washington County, and this, this, this goes to the point of responsible county planning. In residential areas in Washington County, people make their biggest personal investment in their homes. Our residential neighborhoods must be livable and safe for people to comfortably raise their children, walk their dogs, bicycle, jog, and safely cross the streets. With the competition for land in the metro area, there is a trend to rezone and redevelop much needed residential property to commercial development that is slowly eliminating residential areas. If you are elected or re-elected to the county commission, what steps will you take to preserve the livability and safety of existing neighborhoods? Well, first of all, Good planning creates good, stable neighborhoods. Trying to reach out into farmland or land that is outside the urban growth boundary isn't going to provide good, livable neighborhoods. I think that's the beauty of the Oregon's uh, land use bill, is that it takes care of the balance. We can't just have one type of housing. So we can't have roads where Suddenly everybody's going through neighborhoods because the roads can't handle because they haven't been planned right. So I think planning is the absolute basis of how do you get a neighborhood that people want to live in, that people want to come and work in. That's what we're looking for in Washington County. Thank you. Well, 
Well, it's interesting to note that uh, my opponent agrees with me in something. But, uh, you know, I don't know of any, any land that uh, has been taken out of residential to move and moved to, to commercial development. First of all, if there is, then the city did that and not the county. Because as, a, as I explained earlier, the way the process works, land when it is developed is moved to a city who is willing to, to, to uh, accept it into the city. The one exception to that is, is uh, two, or th actually three exceptions, two of them already exist, that's Reedville and Alloa, and the other one is North Bethany, which was put upon us by Metro as a project for the county to do, and I think we have managed, have managed it and handled it very well. But as far as any of the other land, it's if it's in the city, it's a city. If the city moves it, the city does it, not the county. Thank you very much. My name is Joan Smith. I have a brand new blue tag over my red one that I put on when I came in. So Thank you. Very, this is a uh, request for comment from Commissioner Terry. Mrs. Furs's materials that were being passed out as we all came in she wants to see an end to backroom deals, opaque processes, and silencing of public voices. This is appalling. I think of just the one issue about land use. Thousands of hours of testimony, 3,000 pages of testimony in, in meetings. Approval by three county boards, by Metro, by LCDC, what could be more public? Would you like to comment on that? I sure would, because that is a big no misnomer about not being public. Your county is extremely public. First of all, we have advisory committees. We have the CPO system. Those are all public entities. I, if you go beyond that, then you all should be sitting up at the diocese, not the five of us. This, this is a, re a democratic republic which means it's a representative government. You elected us to represent you, and, we're, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of that. Actually, all five of us are doing a pretty good job of that. But as I heard this morning, there's a, there's a new county that I wasn't aware of that we're living in. In addition, to, in addition to that, yes, there was all those things that were done as public, open public forums. It's a misnomer as to how the other two counties handled things. But remember, all three counties approved what we did. Metro approved it, LCC, LCD approved it, and one little thing that, that the courts ruled on was the fact that we included the irrigation as part of the requirement if, in looking at the land. That's what they threw it out on, a little bitty thing. That makes you wonder why the, why the appellate court would do that. Thank you. I'm Bob Horning, and this is for Elizabeth First. Washington County wants to allow agritourism, which would allow a farmer to hold a few weddings, corporate picnics, and school outings on their property. Although the county already pro uh, proposes substantial protections, Save Helvetia, which you are a steering committee member, put out a position paper that asks for many more regulations. Your paper states that you only want a few summer events, practically no weekend events, claim that there is a rise in drunk driving while the sheriff says they have found none. All of this while more, making it more impossible, basically it's totally impossible for farmers to supplement their income with something as simple as a country wedding. You claim you're looking out for the farmers, yet your position paper stops farmers from holding a few weddings. All this while you, by law, already have, have the ability to hold weddings on your own winery. My question to you is how, after reading your papers and understanding how you say you seem to say one thing and uh, seem to mean another, how can I possibly, how can you possibly convince me to vote for you? First of all, Bob, I know that I could never convince you to vote for me, so. <laughs> And secondly, there is no city of Helvetia. That is an, a misnomer. There's no city there. Save, is a, Save Helvetia is an organization. Okay. There, the one problem that really occurs is when there's overuse or misuse of permits. And uh, permitting is very important in farmland. Uh, I don't own a winery, but um, I, I, I have vineyards. Um, and so the problem is when there's overuse and where there is documented criminal activity. And that causes people to become very concerned and therefore, I think, not looking at one or two weddings 
people understand that, what people really need to do and what the commission needs to do is make certain that its rules are clear. Um, I, I would uh, ask you to look at a KGW report and say that we in our neighborhood, in our county, our farmers are farming. That's what they do. And that's what they're permitted to do. Linda, <clears throat> Linda Peters, forum member. Um, this is for Bob Terry. Um, and Elizabeth can comment if she wishes. Um, I'm not at all surprised that you don't recall ever hearing from Greg Mecklem any of the things that he was talking about in his speech because um, I think it's evidence that you are not a very good listener. I also uh, think that it's a great mistake to equate public open houses and public hearings with the actual involvement of citizens in framing land use decisions. Good publicity is not the same thing as good public involvement. Please I would like to hear from you what you think good public involvement is and what role it ought to be playing in the decisions I am asking. You see, he's not listening. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh, isn't that something? Um, what, what, is, what is your belief about citizen participation that is effective in forming public policy? Do you have any role for citizens in that or only your developer friends? Well, that's a good question. First of all, I don't, didn't know I had any developer friends because I never run around with any of the developers in, the, in, in this state or in the community at all. Secondly, we do have the CPO organization for, for, for public participation, which you are a member of. We also have five minutes open participation at the beginning of every county session, and then we, or two minutes rather, and then we have five minutes at the end for every, at the every session. And there's open public statements on every ordinance that comes forward in the county for the, for the commissioners to hear directly. That's open public forum. What other kind of open public forum you're looking for is I really don't know because we do have the CPOs, we do, and every time there's a development or every time there's a road closure or road opening, there are public forums held open for the people to come and, and take notes and, and bring it to the county commission to do. That's what the purpose of them are for. What you would suggest beyond that, I would really like to know. So your statement has no statement, thank you. If you look at goal one and goal two of Oregon's land use bill, it speaks of citizen involvement, but then it speaks in goal two of throughout the process. And that's so important. That's why Oregon's land use bill is so good. And I want to tell you a story about Oregon's land use bill. When I was elected to the Congress in 1992, I was a freshman, freshwoman, and um, I had, was handed the task of getting the money for West Side Light Rail all the way to Hillsboro. It had been authorized, but not appropriated. And I was very new to the process, and I told the Appropriations Committee in Oregon, we have land use planning. We can get all the way. Los Angeles doesn't have that. We got the highest amount of light rail funding based on that. I wish I could say it was my pretty face, but it wasn't. It was based on our land use planning. Over half a billion dollars. It's worthwhile. John Leeper, you have the last question. John Leeper, forum member. This question is for Ms. First. Ms. First, in uh, earlier statements that have been publicized, you have stated that there have been any number of sweetheart deals for builders, the home builders, and backroom deals. I would like for you, if you would please, to cite me at least two examples of those of those backroom deals or sweetheart deals that, have, that are 
part of a very ill-defined statement. In 2008, there was a ballot, or there was an initiative here in, in, in Washington County that um, developers should pay a percentage of, in order to make sure that our roads, when we build a new place, that we invest in it. That was in 2008. Uh, well, taxpayers have continued to pay, pay their share. But ever since that, the commission has put off that tax. In fact, last week, I believe, the commission did it again. Why do taxpayers pay on time? Well, they were told, well, the economy's bad. Last year, the, co the county staff said, no, it's, it's recovered. They could manage that tax. But once again, builders and developers are getting deals that you and I as citizens don't get. Well, I'm sorry, but that just isn't the case. You know, the TDT is a tax that my opponent is referring to. The TDD, TDT tax is paid for by whoever buys the property. It's not paid for by the developers. And the way it currently is, is whoever buys that property has to pay it up front. Now, if it's paid by the developer, then it's in, it's in his cost. And you're going to pay it at that time. The problem is it pushes the value of that property up beyond mortgage value, and therefore banks are, are somewhat not so interested in, in lending it for that because it pushes the, the, the cost of the property up too much. We, we did, we put off 20% of that tax. We did ena enact the tax right away, but we put off 20% of that tax while we rewrote the ordinance to allow to, to abate the problem I just identified. So, and the developers and builders are never involved in any of that at all at any time. No backroom deals, and I'm sorry you're still looking for your answer because you don't have it yet. Folks, let's give these candidates a hand. Okay, we're going to end one minute late. I'm sorry for that. I want to remind you that you can watch this on Cable Access Channel 21. It airs four times per week over the next month. It'll be available late this week. Uh, as soon as I can get it up on the website, we will have the video on YouTube probably about 10 a.m. tomorrow. This uh, program is also available on Podomatic at washingtoncounty.podomatic.com. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash Washington County Public Affairs Forum. And I thank you for uh, enduring this hot and clustered room. Uh, thank you for being here. See you in a week. Bye-bye. <laughs>